Well, hey there, everybody. Here I am, back with a brand new box on the workbench. I've been doing a lot of armor lately, haven't I? Um, but don't worry, I will be getting back to the Warhammer, to the sci-fi, to the airplanes, to all that stuff real soon. It's just a lot of the armored vehicles and tanks and stuff have, have caught my eye. Um, this one is kind of special, kind of cool, because it is a combination of two of history's really significant, really awesome light tanks. The AMX-13 Chaffee. And yes, there is going to be some debate. Do we pronounce that Chaffee or Chaffee? Who knows? There is a Chaffee County in Colorado, but the man that this actual turret and the tank it belongs to, uh, he's, he's long since passed. So is it uh, Chaffee, Chaffee, you know, you'll, you'll find it pronounced both ways, but the French AMX-13 light tank, very prolific vehicle in the history of armor. The M24 Chaffee US light tank, also very long serving, prolific, uh, light, um, reconnaissance scout vehicle in the history of armor and combined into one platform that did not serve that long. That did not see a lot of combat, but it was a very unique way to extend the life of both of these vehicles. And it did actually see service and combat in a very limited scope. And I didn't realize anybody ever put out a model of it, but TACOM did. And this is the second TACOM kit that I have. If you recall, we did the T-30 um, US heavy tank prototype. Um, and it was a great kit, had a little trouble with the tracks, but I was excited when I saw that they did this and thought gotta take a look at it have to so let's do a little unboxing here and then as we uh as always as i as i build the kit itself you know we'll, we'll do some of the history of it but inside the box what do we have one two three four five oh those are going to be fun six seven eight nine ten bags of parts and then one bag of, looks like, photo etch decals and instructions. In this very odd shaped, odd sized, I shouldn't say shaped, odd sized box. We'll put that to the side. Well, let's start with the bag with the hull and the turret. Oh, don't even need to cut it open. So of course, being a light tank, it's a small vehicle. And we've got Kind of soft, almost flimsy feeling, very thin plastic there. But well detailed, nicely done, no rough texture or anything. Uh, nice weld lines all around there. And I don't see I don't see flash or uh, all the ejector marks are inside. And same thing for the bottom of the hull. Very soft plastic, very soft and thin. Nothing really uh, intense or obvious to clean up there. Okay. Now, I noticed... I, I'm guessing this is basically parts from their uh, AMX-30 kit just combined with parts from the, uh, the Chaffee as well. Because on this sprue, so we've got basically whole parts there from the AMX-30, but this is the AMX-30 turret parts as well. So if you wanted to, I'm guessing you could build yourself an AMX-30 turret and play with it or do something else, but good detailing on the hull. Now, there should be photo etched parts to, to cover up some of these areas there, but nicely done overall. Some of the Pioneer tools some spare track parts and then got those going on uh, this bag here looks like it is specific to the Chaffee turret <clears throat> this here looks like this would be so they needed to rig up a special collar to uh, fit the Chaffee turret onto the AMX hull that's what you got there, and then the rest of the pieces for the Chaffee turret and all the accessories that go there. Once again, kind of thin, soft plastic, but I don't see 
uh, a lot of flash, a lot of cleanup, um, ejector pin marks all inside to where you wouldn't have to worry about them. Nicely detailed, even the little cooling holes in that barrel for the coax, all really nicely done. Uh, J parts. Some sprockets and other assorted hole pieces. Two sprues, clean like everything else. Lots of tracks, I'm gonna leave these in there. Um, <clears throat> everything is an individual track, which is good because there's some uh, a few different areas of track sag that we can mold individually here. Pain in the butt though, for the obvious reasons. What's really nice that I like though, is that they did them end to end and not on the side. So that, uh, you know, all the cleanup and all the, the um, anywhere we're gonna attach them, you know, we can paint them all right here and then snip them. And any uh, messy ends or anything are gonna be hidden as we connect them together, uh, as opposed to on the sides. Um, so it, that just makes our job a little bit easier putting them together. Let's see, what do we got here? Uh, sprue E. This looks like it is more hull parts for the most part. Uh, we've got some exhaust pieces and hatches and just various parts to the lower hull. Some more Pioneer tools going on there. Once again, keeping with the theme, very clean moldings. Not a lot of cleanup. On the D sprue here, uh, yet again, <clears throat> some more um, uh, hull pieces, but also we have the uh, original gun. I can't find the little fold there. I'm just gonna cut it open. We have the original gun from the AMX-30. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the 75 or the 90 millimeter gun, to tell you the truth. But like I said earlier, you can build that up if you if you want. Um, searchlight pieces. Very nice detailing though, with like all these rivets and everything are very prominent, but not too big. They'll take a wash very nicely. And then it looks like we've got, what, six of these A screws? One, two, three, five. Road wheels and separate tire pieces. That is awesome. Love that. So we can spray the color on the road wheels and then paint the tire separately and just pop it on. That's awesome. Um, very nice return rollers and some suspension pieces and everything. So five of those, and then K. You know, I hate, sometimes I can see the little fold in the bag where it's secured, and sometimes I just can't. Idler wheels and some other little pieces there. The plastic on this is so thin, which is, I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's not too big for the scale at all. It's very finely done. It's just uh, a little bit thinner than I'm used to. And then we've got clear parts, uh, search lens, which I, you know, I don't think goes on to the the chaffy turret at all. Um, in fact, I don't think that there's any clear parts that go on to the chaffy turret. I think they are all for the hull and the, the AMX turret itself, if we were to use it. And then we've got some pieces for the hull. I'm gonna leave them in there so they stay nice though. If you look at the picture of the actual, uh, the way the tracks lay, this is what I was talking about. We've got different uh, multiple areas with a little bit of track sag, and that's what those individual links will let us do and mimic very nicely. Um, oops, I ripped the bag. Oh well. Now, do we have, is this one sheet or two? This is one sheet of decals, markings, um, I believe that the really uh, the place that this particular vehicle only saw service was in Algeria, in French Algeria, um, during some of the little uh, bush wars and civil wars in there. So we've got some nice decals, it looks like, for French vehicles. 
Um, and again, we'll talk more about the history when I build, when we do the build. Photo etch, these are probably light guards, um, grill covers, and some other stuff. Nice thin photo etch, which is a blessing and a curse. Uh, blessing because it's easy to work with, but curse because it's very fragile once you get it together. But nice and easy to cut through. Hmm. That's weird. Uh, okay, but here we have our paint guides. And these, of course, finish just in an OD green, or uh, usually it should be a, a darker green than just olive drab, but um, they've got it listed as olive drab, so not a lot of color. But the detailing on this will come from weathering for a, a uh, an African desert environment. And two different decal options there. The instructions, I was fairly impressed with instructions uh, last time I built a kit from this company. Of course, you got your parts map. And very clear instructions, very good parts illustrations on how it all goes. Um, like most kits, starting with a lower hull. and working our way to the tracks. Now with this particular one, I think what I would do is I would skip this step and I would want to get the tracks because of the sag that needs to be built into them. I'd want to do all the painting and weathering of the lower hull, the sides, get the tracks on there, get them, wow, 86 pieces for one side, get them sagged and put in place and then build the, the side decks on top of them and then go through the rest of it. I think it'd be easier to get it done that way. But great illustrations, really demonstrating all the pieces and everything in there. And then we go on to the turret. And now I don't know why this piece was was just thrown in there. This instruction here is the AMX turret, and this is I I believe that this particular picture is showing the AMX 30 with a 105 millimeter main gun, which isn't even included in here. I don't know what this is for because. This stops at step 24, and here's an insert with steps 34, 1 and 2, and 35, 1 and 2. I don't know what that's about. I don't know why this is here. Pages 23, 22 and 23, and this stops. I don't know why this is in here, but it's in here. Go figure. Um, <clears throat> so 23 total steps in this build on 13 pages, um, and it's a very nice, clean build doesn't look overly complicated we might um hit some snags with those individual link tracks or the photo etch but overall it looks like a, a relatively simple build easy paint scheme um because it's all od green of course we'll, we'll do some color modulating and, and you know some lightning and darkening and shadows and then weathering and that's where we'll get our detail from but i'm i'm kind of excited because this is a, a this is a, a tank you don't see modeled very often so i hope you guys will join me for this build, which uh, will be coming soon. And if you guys have, uh, anybody has knowledge of the vehicle you wanna share, please do put it in the comments. Um, <clears throat> you know, the French really, following World War II, um, they lost their empire completely um, in Africa and in Asia. I'm also gonna, I'm working right now on a, on a straight up French M24 that fought in the Indo-Chinese, uh, Indo-China wars. The, which we would call Vietnam, the precursor to the Vietnam War. Um, and it had a really cool camouflage pattern. You guys will see that when it's all finished. Join me for the build. Not sure how many parts it'll be, but coming soon. So keep building yours, build them well, and I'll see you guys shortly.